Hello guys, this is Panzermarsh36. I'm back from my two week like complete lack of modeling at all because of the end of the school year, but now it's all over and I've got a summer and nothing to do, so uh, well, I thought I could start this off with this kit I got about two weeks ago. I haven't touched it at all yet. Um, I bought this for uh, Adam Man's upcoming Stug Life group build. You know, I all you all know I love Stugs, and this is a really cool kit here, especially Stugs from Dragon. Slide so Robbie is Dragon. This is the Stunger Shoots uh, three mit Flusigas and Triub. <laughs> I, I can't speak German, but what that means is basically it has a you see these tanks in the back there. It's a liquefied petroleum gas. Um, like natural gas rather than you know diesel or gasoline or whatever the actually, yeah, I think it's gasoline I'm not sure I, I actually don't know wow okay and also this one has a weighting muffler as well because this is uh if you look at the way that the front hatches are and stuff like that this vehicle is actually representing a Panzer 3M probably that actually was refitted as a Sturmgeschutz probably because it got damaged something like that so it's got a a weighting a weighting muff muffler to go through uh, rivers, stuff like that. It's also got spare tracks, grenade launchers. It's got the uh, MG port on the <clears throat> on the mantlet there, which you sometimes see uh, lots of spare tracks on the front too. So I see on the side of the box here we have um, the new stat gas system, the LPG stuff. Lots of photo etch for it. Um, we got spare tracks all over the front and um, spare tires on the side. Really cool looking vehicle. I like all the all the add-ons they're onto it with some storage so it'll look totally loaded. Um, yep. So this is the initial production, but I'm not exactly certain about it. I don't know. So once again you got more photo watch options. These uh dragon stooks always have these um these braces for the sides are always um photo watch also you got the mesh grills there and that plate there, and I don't even know what that is. Um, you can see here they are one piece hatches. On a, if it was a Stug that was built as a Stug, they would probably be two piece hatches. Um, but this is a Panzer 3M refit, and also I think they would be the same size. The one, the one wouldn't be a lot wider than the other. Mud guards can be opened or closed. Uh, engine deck is one piece. That's always really nice. You can kind of build it in sections and put it together. I built a couple of these. I think it's, this is gonna be my fourth Dragon Stug, maybe. <laughs> We got the full, um, well, full interior of the fighting compartment, except for the ammo racks, which you can't even see if you're looking through the hatches at the top. But you get a gun breech, all the seats and everything, and the floor. It looks good. Uh, if you're gonna like leave the top removable, you might wanna uh, take care of the ammo racks, though, because but if you're just looking in through the loaders and, and the uh, commander's hatches, you can't even see them at all. So this looks really good. Uh, more photo etch um, details for the added arm armor. Weld seams are always good on Dragon Kits. Uh, always got a nice suspension in there with actual torsion bars. And here you got the um, the deep weighting muffler here. As you can see, usually they just kind of end down there or they have like an exhaust thing right about there. But this one actually comes up up there and has some fancy exhaust valve at the end so it can go through rivers because there are those in Russia. Um, slide molded or you get two types of exhaust pipes. Yeah, just the overall details. The side here, you can see there's this stuck there. You can see a lot of track armor on the front and on the sides, but it looks really cool. And you get one option here, which comes with some Balkan crits, whatever crosses, and some license plates or marking things like that. And I actually found a picture of this. This kit here, it's based off. Well, I, I found a photo of what they based it off of. It's the exact same thing. It's uh, some kind of training vehicle that they used somewhere in France. The photo was exactly the same thing. It had the the gas there, the tracks, the track armor, the same crosses, and the same license plate. Or uh, it's a, I'm gonna call it license plate, but that's not exactly what it is. But it didn't have the grenade launchers in the photo. But it, they based it off of one vehicle. Like I'm not sure if they made a lot of those, but I think it looks really cool. I'm not super crazy about historical accuracy. I just like like I'm not gonna replicate, find a photo of the exact vehicle and put the rust patches exactly where they were on it. If it's if it's pretty accurate and it looks cool and it's a nice kit and you build it up nice, or at least I build it up nice, then I'm happy with it. I like it to be realistic, but not incredibly over the top, so I don't have fun on it. Because you know, well, everybody can have their own idea of what they think is realism, what they like, but you know, as long as I have fun building it and I'm happy with the result, I like it. All right, so let's open this up. I think I already showed you that the sides are just the 
the box art again. It's kid number 31. Cyber Robbie makes a lot of uh, stugs like this that are kind of one-offs or similar vehicles like that. Alright, thank you for purchasing. You're welcome. Uh, here we got the magic tracks and the, all the full watch options. So, okay, here we have some kind of piping for the the fuel thingies on the back. And then right over here, yeah, you can see the little metal things there and there. There's just a couple of them in there. That's the kind of stuff you might need, need to solder to actually get that nice. Sometimes foot wedge too. Also see all the periscopes in there. There's a lot of them because it's a uh, got the stud cupola. Down here we have the MG42. This is going to be in the um, the loader's hatch flip up mount thing. Um, they're always really nice details as you can see there. Really nice porting molded out. You know. Also in here you can see the decals. The bedding decals are always really good. We got a tow cable. I'm not sure if it actually shows a tow cable on the vehicle there, but yeah, Stokes did have tow cables. <laughs> and then underneath here, this is the this is the photo watch for the the, the stat gas system, and that looks kind of complex actually. But well, they're actually mostly one piece. They get that kind of fold together. But and here we have the normal Stug photo watch options. Here we got these uh, these metal rings there for the, uh, the idler wheel at the back strip there, I'm not exactly certain it's like little brackets and braces and things like that tool clamps I think those are or something similar to that then you got the uh, the exhaust there, not the exhaust but just the intakes on the side behind the superstructure and then also these plates here just go beside that and you have rear fenders I think that are photo etch or something like that. That's what it looks like to me, but I'm not sure. It's like the uh, the plate underneath the mop. Because it's like the, the fender, and then there's like a piece underneath that stops it from just falling into the wheels. You have the tracks, so I don't know. That's what I think it is. I'm not exactly an expert. I just really like Stooks. <laughs> so here you got the uh, magic tracks here. You always have uh, enough of these, and there's probably going to be a ton extra because of all the all the spare track armor. Uh, one side is for right, one side's for left because there's a tiny difference on the end. Like the pin on one end is going to be a little bit smaller. I'm not even going to show you that, but basically at one end of the track, outside the track there's a pin that kind of sticks out. One end's a little bit longer and thinner, one end's a little bit shorter and fatter, but if you put any mud on there, you can't tell at all. But you know, if you're going to be, if you, you want to go with that, make sure which side's right, I'll go right ahead, and I probably will. So here's the stat gas system. I'm not exactly certain about how this goes together, but that's a very interesting thing here. I think it's more like it looks like a breach or something, but whatever. <laughs> These are all nicely molded here. These parts here are pretty thin, but as you can see, there's only a couple of molding points around the flat end. You can just easily sand that off. All looks really nice. No flash. because It's a dragon kit, so. And tiny little wing nuts down there, if you can see those. Get some better lighting in here. And on the bottom there, those are pretty small, but you just cut those off carefully, and they should look really cool. All right, well, let me set this up. Okay, um, let's go. Here we got Panzer III FM. See, I knew it was an FM. I'm a genius. <laughs> Um, this looks like the waiting muffler, because Dragonachi does make a, a waiting muffler Panzer 3M, probably with all, they probably make another M without it, another M, or an N with it, and they've, they made like every single Panzer 3 that ever existed. So this here looks like the main part of the waiting muffler. And then, got stuff like fenders, the front, special front plate because of uh, the fact it's a Panzer 3 hull. The rear plate, stuff like that, that's got a, a special bracket for the waiting muffler. So you're gonna have normal stug bits in here as well as some Panzer three bits. So you're probably gonna have, you know, even extra parts. And on the other side, we got so now there's, there's a stug set, a stug sprue. So you've got the rear engine deck. Sorry for the glare there. Uh, it's one piece. There's only molding points on this end. I don't see any flash at all on those weld seams down these down the grooves there. Look really nice. You can see them there.
Dragon Horse does a really good job on the weld seams. And I've really enjoyed all the sticks I've built from them. They got the fenders, and then these are always a little irritating here. These. I'll just mute it. Yeah, there you go. These are the. Um, well, you got these plates that go on top. Because, you know, if you look on the back of the engine deck, there's panels that go in here and in there, which are these things. And then inside that, you have these little things that stick up. These little square things here. But underneath these, you have these parts, if you can follow me. And they've got these little things on the inside, which you, you just cut them out. Now, you only have to sand them because you can't see the inside, but still. They're just the fact that there's that bit on the inside always kind of bothers me. I have to kind of get my cutters in there and hack at it. But still, you have to clean it up because it's on the inside, underneath, apart. So, you never see. Unless you're going to leave the hatches open, then you might need it. But then you also need a new uh, engine. Or an engine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I've done a video in a while, I'm just gonna be like rambling for the whole thing. <laughs> Alright, so we got here Stug 3G. So that's an upper. And this is, um. Yeah, this is an earlier one, so it's got the hatches this way. They open up like that and like that. And later ones will have it opening to the sides because there's that remote control MG thing in there that can be controlled from the inside. But this way they open up because this one folds down, and that one actually folds up and then holds the shield up. So if you're going to have that MG shield for the loader up, you have to have the hatch open and propped up against it because that's how it was held up. Alright, uh, we got the grenade launcher brackets here. Uh, more little hatches around here. Cupola. Right there. Looks good. Um, and these little little bits here. Where are they at? Yeah, looks pretty good. I don't see any flash at all. And the weld seams and the torch cuts, you know, like you see it right there, they all look really nice. Um, there's always a, also this is another thing that happens with all the stood kits, and it's on the inside. Whatever, it's pretty easy to clean up. And it's on the inside, I'm pretty sure. What I'm just seeing here is, also here is superstructure as well. You can see all those little things on the inside. Well. But also, it's kind of bent off there, and it looks a bit broken right at the um, sprue attachment points there. Um, but I think that's going to be all right. Once again, you got beautiful, weld, beautiful weld lines right there on the on the sides of on the corners of these mounts. There, I'll, also, I'll show you them. If I can get that stupid glare to go away, uh, there you go. You can see them there. Jesus, that glare is terrible. Yeah. Alright, I'll open up the rest of the bag so there's no glare. Oh, gee. Here's the... I won't open up this bag, but here's the... Um, the... Pantlet. It's the late one. Even though it's early production, you know. Because it's kind of like a couple together stug. And it has the coax... I think that's what that is, MG. Or there's like an MG34 or whatever in there that could fire out um, because usually this dog only has the the one on the top but some had this one in the coax just to fire where the gun was and I think some I've seen they've drilled out a hole like um um I'll shut you say I saw I saw a photo where they drilled out a uh, like a hole through the tank right about there so that when the, uh, kind of like on the opposite side from the driver's port, so the, I guess the radio operator, whoever sat there, could fire it out, kind of like a normal coax on a Panzer III. I think that was a, I've never actually seen that in the production vehicle, but I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know where that photo is, though, but. Alright, let's open up this hull. The bags here look a bit beat up, but I think that's good. This is a, just a kit that's been in a bag for a while. So these Panzer III hulls from Dragon are really nice. Look at the detail on there. You can see that. That's really nice. This uh, Dragon's Stugs and Panzer, oh, sorry, and, well, I guess Panzer III as well, but their Stugs and T-34s are really nice kits because there are a lot of parts in them, but it's not like some of their kits, like their Panzer IV Super kits and some of the other ones where there's just parts everywhere. They, can, they could have left these bits here all molded off as Dragon often does, but... They keep them on like that, 
you still have incredible detail and less parts because sometimes dragon kits can get a little irritating in the number of parts. But their Stugs and T34s are really nice kits. And also there's going to be torsion bars that go across on the inside through here. So actually, you put the, it's like a really long rod that you just put in there and it slides all the way through and you can glue it there and then you can actually bend it and it will actually kind of twist like a real torsion bar. And you'll have a semi-workable suspension. I just glue it all together though because I'd never really make a diorama with a stug, but I might with this one. Alright. So here we have the suspension bits. This is a stug 3G sprue. So we got the... Here, I'll open this up. this sprue here which is the, set, the suspension like I said. So you've got bits for the rear here. Um, these are for the front around the, the um, drive sprockets. Uh, this is a rear piece. It kind of goes on the bottom of the hull. Where the bottom of the hull meets the flat bit at the back is like an angle plate and then the bottom. Uh, this is the actual rear plate here. Well the upper rear plate then there's a lower rear plate down there because it kind of sticks out a bit. And these are normal mufflers. So you want to be using these in the kit. The ones that we have, actually, the, the, the waiting muffler comes out up on the top there, and then it's the little thing up there. Uh, these are the idler mounts here, right there and there. They're always really nice. No, there's a tiny bit of a seam line on the edge of these, because, you know, they're round bits and they're small, so you always have a seam line, but... I don't know if it's going to focus on... I don't know if you can see that to get the camera or the light better, but... Really nice parts in here. Those are all the uh, suspension arms there. This here, actually, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this is like an arm armored plate beside the cupola. Just threw that on this sprue, I guess. I'm not sure if you use it in this kit. And then these are the uh, just gonna shock absorbers that go at the front and back of either side on the front, the, the first and last suspension torsion arm, whatever. Alright, so here are some inside bits. So we have, um, that looks like the back or the, uh, that's like the back or the front, I don't remember exactly. There's the floor over here. Oh, sorry. This is the back or the front. And then this is the floor over here. You can see there's a really nice tread pattern on that. Uh, shows up really nice under wash. I did the, well, I'm currently doing up the interior of my Stug 3 with the waffle zimmer it. And it looks really nice, even though I just did a quick wash on it, not even any pigments. It looks really nice. Um, these are, this is like the table that the gun kind of sits on. One part can swivel back and forth on it. Uh, here's if you're doing a normal, or not, like an, an earlier production stug or an F, I think. You can have that as your manlet, but it looks kind of bent on the sprue. Luckily, I'm not using it. Right here is a chair, probably for the gunner or the loader. Probably the gunner, because the loader rides are always running around in there. Here's the commander's seat and or standing up if he's looking up the cupola. Um, there's bits here overall for the breach and the yeah I could I could call you every part but whatever. Radios over here they're really nice. Once again you have those sprue things on the inside but they're not that bad. I guess they're necessary with the amount of detail you have on there. So you just kind of paint these up quickly, you know, a bit of red, silver, dry brushing. I think they're usually a dark green. It looks really good, actually. And you only have a small, a couple of small hatches to look through. Anyways, but the interior is really good for this. There's no interior for the driver's compartment. But, yeah, there's a really good interior for this fighting compartment. And, yep, all, all looks really good. Parts are well molded, you got a... Well, actually, that's broken there. Oops. I didn't break that, but right there, this little wheel there, elevation wheel, it is broken. But luckily, it's still in the sprue, so I could probably actually just bend it back there, like that, put some extra thin on there, re-glue it, and then cut it off the sprue. That's not that bad, but I probably have extras from one of my stugs. I don't think I did the interior on it. All right, now we have <clears throat> this bit here, which just looks like random tools and stuff. Okay, this, uh, this is actually special for this kit because it's got... Oh no, this is a Panzer III. Okay. 
because it's got these uh, there's photo options for these parts right here we saw which are underneath the here are the actual fenders these can go underneath it it's like a thing and then the fender can fold up or down so if you want to leave it up and bend that little photo etch part underneath just to add some cool damage I don't know go ahead so tools everywhere they're all really nice you do have molded on plastic um, little clamps around. I'm sorry, I'm so tired right now. <laughs> um, but they're really good. Um, detail, always nice. I haven't really noticed any large amounts of flash or anything here. And then over here we have these things here, which look like they almost have a wooden texture on them. Like there's brackets there, or some kind of cast metal. Looks more like wood, though. I'm not sure if those are um, the track mounts or something. Like I have no idea actually what they are. Hmm, maybe they're part of, oh, they're probably part of the stat gas system. So kind of like some kind of wooden concocted up bracket for them. That's, might be, that might be bullet splash armor there. Don't even know if you use that because this thing doesn't have a turret. Um, you see the tools here. Nice and thin. Minimal attachment points on them. Well, it's on them at least. Yeah, you do have some pin marks on the inside, but it's the inside. You don't see that. All right, what's up next? Oh, more tools. These are stub tools. Uh, I have so many dragon tools. I probably have hundreds, maybe, maybe a thousand of them. <laughs> you, just, you get so many, and you only use a couple. But who's complaining? So we got these here. These are um, shackles or whatever. And then you have these at the end here, which are for the tow cables. You got a metal bit to go in between. Oh, right there. And uh, you got the jack block. It's the end of the jack block up there. And then the rest of the jack block and the fire extinguishers and some antenna mounts are down here. And what else do we have? We have, oh, these are the grenade launchers. So we have some uh, shields for the driver's glass uh, right there. There's various little bits involved. These are clamps for the jack. Uh, these are the insides of the front hatches, if you like the, the handles on them or whatever. You got these little things here, which are just, um, I think there's you for like camouflage netting or something. And these are fender mounts. They go like uh, between the fender and the hull. And then we have little tiny pieces here. These are these are the hinges that go on the rear deck. You know those doors, those, those things that flip up. I was talking about all those panels on there. The hinges are separate parts which you then put on. I never really understood that, but they're not that bad. It's only one attachment point of each, and it's pretty good. Um, and then here you have the grenade launchers, and you all see some of them are full, some of them are empty because you know maybe they've discharged some of the smoke rounds. You have the option there. You can. I think usually the grenade inside's a green color or something. I don't know. But yeah, just you can have the options of having some full, some empty. Just add some interest, make it look like it's in some combat. And then finally, some more tools. These look uh, like normal stoke tools. The barrel cleaning rod here at the end. Um, and then the bottom of it there, hammer for close quarters combat. Uh, bolt cutters also for close quarters. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, and then you have a, and that's a track tension tightening something. A no tech light here at the front. Um, shovels. And an axe for close quarters combat. Two axes, one for the loader, one for the driver. I'm trying to be funny, don't worry. <laughs> um, more tools, there's different options from where the, the brackets are. That's why there's two shovels, two axes, and two of these things here. They're kind of like a crowbar. And then over here we have the jack. So you end up with two halves, um, the plate at one end. The oops, sorry. You got the kind of like the arm thing there, the, and it cranks out, you know, extended out. One end, both sides of it, and then you end up with some clamps and things here in the handle. All really nice. Um, here we have the stack S system. Let's look at this. This is a. Uh, and also a Stug 3 G screw that has a barrel in it. It's probably going on 20 minutes now because, you know, inbox review, just looking at the plastic, so I'll spend half an hour on it. 
Hopefully you're still with me. <laughs> so we got the um, muzzle brake here. Then you have the separate end piece there, and then this little thing on the inside, I'm not even sure. It's like a little separate thing to make it smaller. I don't know. <laughs> um, this here is at the very end, I think it's where the barrel attaches to the mantlet, if you're doing a, a square mantlet one, which we have piece for here. This is the very back on the inside goes on the other side of this part up here and that's where the breach and stuff happens or is happens <laughs> um, here's the actual like breach guard thing that was like that thing around the, around the breach so on one side you have this panel then you have that one at the back and then on the other side you have this thing come around so you kind of like a U shape here's the barrel one piece slide molded as always on these um, dragon kits and these are really nice because I'm sorry for the gun out of focus here you have the barrel here, and then you have only two attachment points on the bottom. So if you even if you're crappy at sending them off like me, you just put those at the bottom. I think you might have to modify that there a little bit. I'm not sure because it's designed to go on a certain way, but you can just kind of modify that a bit. But you can always end up with those two sanded off points where they were attached at the bottom. There's a tiny seam line you can probably see there, but just a couple of quick passes with a fine sanding stick and they'll be gone. Alright, here's the stat gas system. So it looks like we have some it's, it's pretty not, not very many parts in here, but you have these three tanks here. Three tanks here, three caps there over the bottom, and then just a couple little parts up here. This one's here pretty small. Uh, but you know, looks pretty good. Don't see any flash. There's just a small a slight seam line as always on there. I have to make sure I do a good job cleaning these up because I don't think I have any spare stack gas tanks there, but you can see there's nice piping detail up there. I think you can see the, maybe you can see the little bit of the seam line on there. It's not bad though. <laughs> Alright, so now what do we have left? Oh, the wheels and things. We're trying to make this one quick. Alright. Uh, so we got the normal uh, road wheels here. These are idlers, they have the, um, the Continental, or what does it say? I think something like Continental. Uh, words written on them, which is always nice. Um, here's the torsion arms. The torsion bars. No, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I can't think right now. <laughs> and then we have these um, driver, the drive sprockets and the idlers over here. If I get the glare out of there. Idler mount, and then these little pins over here, which are for if you're putting um, spare road wheels on the rear deck, which you want on this kit because the stat gas system is in the way. So instead you have them on the side in those fancy brackets on the side of the superstructure. Uh, I just won't go into detail here, but you, you can see there's, there's a slight seam around all the wheels, but when you sand off all four of the mold points to take those off with it, you also probably want to make it look a little rough because they're road wheels on a tank. And um... Yep, they are. And Dragon's done a good job here of putting the attachment points on the on the, on the uh, drive sprockets on the teeth, not between them. Which I don't understand why some manufacturers and some kids have that. It's just so hard to get in there and sand it out. Oh. All right, now we got the instructions. Everybody's favorite part on a Dragon kit. All right. So gosh, here this is that Panzer 3M sprue with uh, those weird brackets on there. I didn't even use them. The weird things I thought were wooden. You only use a few little bits in there, which are the um, like the rear fenders and well, and then the, I think those are the inside clamp or the inside handles on the hatches on the front there. The special Panzer 3M hatches. Anything that's blue here, you will not be using. Or maybe if there's an option between two parts, it'll keep it white too. So any part where there's an option, you'll have less pieces. So actually, it looks like you're using most of the parts, apart from that entire sprue there. You got all these extra rear plates here, which you're not using because it's a Panzer III hull, so you won't use these Stug rear plates for the normal uh, mufflers. You'll have the special Panzer III ones. Um, well, you won't be using the breech because you'll be using the fancy... yeah. That's interesting. It's just because you're not using the breech mount there. Because I thought on the first sprue I opened up there was a thing that I said looked like a breach. Which is weird. I wasn't exactly certain what it was, but... I guess maybe it's a special breach. I have no idea. 
So you got two big screws of photo etched parts. Also calls those metal pipes I showed you photo etched parts. Yep, looks like I did all the screws here. Alright, so now we get into the instructions. Dragon instructions are always a little cluttered and confusing. But after a while, you'll get used to them. Um, you just have to read through them. Make sure it looks and it makes sense. Also, I like to look up the people who have built the kit before, and they often rant about all the problems in the instructions, and I can learn from them. Um, so overall, this looks pretty straightforward. You put the torsion arms in, you put the little clamps on the top there, a little part that goes attaches it in. Road wheels look pretty good here with the photo etch um, mounts there on the, or the photo etch plates there on the inside of the idlers. Um, it looks straightforward here until the um, muffler mount here, which is separate. It's a new part on the stoop instructions. This is the fancy muffler here. You have an option between using a couple different parts. I'm not sure exactly what the difference is there. It looks pretty similar. And you got the rear plate here. Here you're putting on some tracks. You have the option of putting on left tracks or right tracks. <laughs> Quite an option there. Um, but this still looks pretty straightforward until this part here where you have to hack off all these. Oh uh, yeah, because usually there is a photo etch screen over the back there. Usually there's a photo etch screen there, but since it's a waiting muffler, obviously it has to be waterproof. So they've got a plate there instead. You have to cut off all those mounts for the screen. And then you have the fancy muffler right there. So that's interesting. And then we have the um, one fender here. They show you putting on the ends of the tow cable and then putting the tow cable like around and in it. I would not do that. <laughs> I would actually measure it out properly and uh, put it on as one with the ends attached to it. Uh, sorry, am I even on the screen here? I'm talking about right there. They show the you putting them on and then the next step down here and they show you by actually putting the cables on um, okay now we got the other fender here looks all pretty straightforward you know, it's not there's not that many parts in the kit compared to some dragon sets I know but there's still quite a lot um, here we got the stack guys these are also new instructions you also have the option, of, or not the option, but that special uh, mount for the spare row wheels inside of the superstructure. And then the stack guy system over here. Mm, yeah, it looks all pretty good. A lot of photo etch there, though, and some kind of metal. That's what the metal wiring is for. Probably gonna have to solder that. It looks pretty small, and I don't think super glue is gonna hold that together very well. Um, some more spare tracks up on the top. Yep. And then your barrel in inside, so you can see the inside here. It is pretty well detailed. You got all the bridge and everything there. Um, and then we move on to the final bit here. Um, yeah. So I saw you putting on like a draping one of those little shackle whatever right there over the uh, spare track holder there that's just what I saw in the photo that I was talking about of the actual vehicle they're just replicating it and then we have yeah, here it shows you the difference between the track C one has a pin like it shows a tiny difference but one's M, one's K I don't know why it's not R and L but you know maybe there's a code or something and then it, oh yeah since there's no attachment or there's no uh, locating marks on the whole sides for the uh, little spare track mounts on the inside, they actually give you measurements 28.5 millimeters from the rear. Hmm. So you're probably going to have to measure that out before you glue on all that stuff there, otherwise you're going to be in some trouble, but you can probably just BS it and kind of just put it on where, where it looks good. And then we have one one here, ah, here we go. So yeah, this is the one I saw, it was, I think it was a Panzer School. I'm not sure exactly what that says, but they're based off one real vehicle, and you can see there's the kind of license plate thing over there. Yeah, there you can see whatever it's from. I'm not even going to try to say that. But I'm probably going to break all the rules and uh, give it a cool camo and everything, because I like Stugs and it's a cool vehicle. And it's like a one-off vehicle. I'm not going to paint it up exactly like it says in the box. I never do that. I'll keep it legitimate 
but I uh, won't be. I'll keep it legitimate in the in the camouflage pattern, the markings and stuff like that, but it won't be very it won't be a hundred percent accurate. But you know, that's how often what I do. Like my Bradley I'm working on, I might do a NATO camo on it just because. <laughs> but that's the kit. Um I don't know if I've any if I've done any more I, I did do a review of their of the one with the Zimmerit, the waffle Zimmerit from Dragon. It's similar to this one. It's got the side plates and stuff. But this kit I'm planning to go all the options. It's gonna have all the spare tracks and everything on it. Maybe some stowage, maybe not. I might just keep it kind of with all this gear on it. All this like armor and stuff like that on it. Don't think I'll go crew, but I'll leave the uh, at least one of the hatches open and have the machine gun opened up. I've kind of planned this out already. Looking forward to this. It's really cool that uh, special fuel system there and all this track armor looks really nice on this. So I do a camouflage on this. Well, I might do a winter camo. Ooh, that'd be cool. Never know. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I'm going to be building this up for, um, as I said before, Adam Man's uh, Stook Life GB, which I think starts in the end of June. I actually don't know. But I'm sure going to have fun building this. If I've, I've actually still got, uh, st still got to finish that. And with the Waffle Simmer, i still got to paint that. But you can never have too many Stugs on the bench. So thanks for watching, guys. This is my 100th video, so of course it's about a Stug. Um, especially a Dragon Stug like this. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I really recommend Dragon's Stugs and T-34s for, um, well, intermediate level people. Or if you just want to tackle it, like, uh, some of the Dragon kits are pretty intense, so I wouldn't recommend them to a newer, to a newer mother, but their T-34s especially are actually pretty nice kits. They're not that complicated. They can get a little frustrating with points, though, but that's all what this hobby's about, right? Getting frustrated. <laughs> Forgetting the stress of your day in a different kind of stress, basically, as the photo watch part pings away off into the corner of the room, never be found again. <laughs> Alright, guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, as I said, probably three times already. Thanks for watching. I will do, uh, I don't think I'll build through, but I'll probably do channel updates on it, and I'll probably do a video on painting and weathering it, just because that's always fun for me to do, and it helps you guys out. If you have any cool camouflage patterns or stuff like that to um, send in on me, because I'm not actually sure what kind of camo I'm going to do in it, but I'm going to do a badass one for sure. If you've got any ideas about what kind of camouflage I could do, I would really appreciate that. Just send them to my email, panzermeister36 at gmail.com. It's linked to my YouTube channel. Yep, so uh, thanks for watching, guys, and goodbye.